All right, we'll start. Question number one, why is it natural that girls are attracted to boys? Are there other reasons why girls and boys can't touch each other? What are those reasons? And why is sexuality not something that religious people are allowed to talk about? We are about to talk about it. <laughs> so. It's not that we're not allowed to talk about it. That's a terrible mistake. We have to talk about it. It's part of Torah. It's an important part of Torah. It's also an important part of life. So not allowed to talk about it is, is not correct. We don't talk about it casually because it's not a casual subject. See, back in the 1960s, there was a kind of a revolution. Some called it a revolution. Where people felt that the subject of sex has become too heavy, too serious, producing a lot of guilt feelings, and nobody talked about it. That's what's amazing, right? <laughs> you can produce so much guilt without even talking about it. So they decided that they're going to go to the opposite extreme. They're going to make it a casual subject. It's not so serious. It's not so heavy. It's just some fun and it's recreational and it's healthy and just enjoy. Stop being so serious about it. Well, since then, the, um, the entire subject and the entire experience of human sexuality has gone down the drain. It got worse every year. Instead of being a source of fun and satisfaction, it became a form of social pressure, of expectation, of um, anxiety. It also became so cheap. It became so ordinary that people were starting to lose interest altogether. And we discovered the hard way that it is not a fun and games thing. It is a very serious thing, a very important part of our lives, and it deserves a little more respect than we were giving it. In fact, the whole Me Too movement of women complaining that they're being uh, molested and abused and then taken advantage of and insulted, that is the direct result of this attitude that it should be fun and games. If it's fun and games, well, how much fun do you want to have? How much of a game is it? Obviously, there's going to be a lot of misunderstanding. Generally, men took it really literally, it's fun and games, so let's have some fun. And they did things that were very nasty. So women started to complain and the men said, what are you complaining about? We're having fun. It's just a game, play, play the game. Don't complain so much women had to put a stop to it. It's not fun and games. It's real, it's deep, it's serious, and it's holy. And to try to make fun and games out of it just destroys it. So I think the latest statistic is that couples whether they're living together or married, hardly have sex anymore. Like once a month, maybe. And the explanation is that men and women both work and they work hard. And at the end of the day, they're tired and they just don't have the energy. I'm afraid that that's not the reason. I'm afraid the reason is that it has lost its appeal, it's overindulged, 
it's no longer awesome. So if I'm not in the mood, let's skip it. Who needs it? So the result is that the only time sex is exciting is if it's illegal. And that's what's happening. People are looking for the sexual experience that is a little risky, a little dangerous, because just regular intimacy, nobody's interested. Now, one of the things that they did to destroy life for human beings is that they called intimacy love, making love. So back then, it was kind of a reaction to the, to the war in Vietnam, and the slogan was, make love, not war. Instead of making war, let's, let's be loving. That is such an unhealthy disturbance of reality. See, love is an emotion. You feel love. You don't make love. Um, also, love is not nearly as, as significant as intimacy. In fact, Love is ne not nearly as important as they make it out to be. So the first thing we need to do is separate love from sex. Because in most cases, when, I'm, when a person says, when a man says, I love you, he means, he means I, I want to have sex. And he may love you, he may not love you, but that's besides the point. Even if he loves you, it is not a reason for being intimate. Obviously, you, you love your, your mother and father. It doesn't mean you have to be intimate. So love and sex are two very separate things and they should not be confused. Um, intimacy is much more important than love. It's much more powerful than love. Um, and that's why when you get married, there's a ceremony, you invite the whole community, you do some holy stuff, you love somebody, it's nobody's business, it's no big deal. You don't invite anybody, you don't make a party. The truth is that love can be very selfish. To be intimate, you have to stop being selfish. So when you're, when you're having or, or indulging in sex for the entertainment of it, for the fun of it, just for the experience of it, you're being totally selfish. It's your experience. It's what you're feeling. Only you feel it. You're into yourself very intensely when you're, when you're having pleasure. So love is selfish. And sex is selfish. And that's ruining all good marriages. Because people keep going back into their selfish mode because they think they're making love. And love is selfish. Because love is about me. If I love you very, very much, but I don't tell you, you'll never know. Because I'm feeling it, not you. And the same is true with sex. So what the Torah says is that if you cheapen the intimacy, what's supposed to be intimate, powerful, and awesome, when you cheapen it, you turn it into just plain sex, and then people are going to lose interest. So what does the Torah say about boys and girls, men and women? On the one hand, the relationship between a man and a woman is the most powerful thing in the world, which is obvious because it can produce babies. That is truly awesome. The miracle of birth. So it's obviously a very powerful thing.
But beyond re producing babies, the bond that it creates between a man and a woman that lasts a lifetime, that's also awesome. And if that bond doesn't last a lifetime, it shatters everybody because it's such a powerful thing. So the Torah says, treat intimacy with the respect that it deserves. Don't cheapen it because you're gonna destroy everything. It's like, it's like using a Sefer Torah for your, um, to hang your coat on, God forbid. So what's gonna happen eventually? Eventually you'll have no Torah because you can't have a cheap Torah. It's either a Torah or it's nothing. So we can talk about it some more in some more details, but the point of it is we have lost respect for intimacy and we turned it into a game and it's destroying families, it's destroying marriages, it's ruining all relationships between men and women where men can't trust women and women can't trust men. We don't understand each other because we have no definition. We don't know what we're doing. We're making it up as we go along. So all these guys who are arrested for harassing women or molesting women, their argument is, I thought it was just fun and games. When did it become so serious? And of course it works both ways. There are women who use sex to, to control men, to destroy men. So it's not, it's, not a, it's not a simple issue or a simple question. Why can't I touch a boy? You're not touching a boy. You're going into the, into the area, into the arena of human intimacy and you go very carefully. It deserves the respect that we give it. 